Waves of Hope conversations on parental bereavement. Today, we've got the topic called Pregnancy After Loss, and this has been wished by one of our um, viewers, one of you who's requested that topic. So, Birgit, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? Yeah, sure. Hi, uh, I'm Birgit Roots, and I'm working with um, parents with pregnancy and infant loss in various ways, such as individual support already in the hospital, but I'm also leading a couple grieving groups locally here. Um, I'm also educating professionals such as midwives, doctors, and doulas how to support parents better already in the early stages of their loss. Thank you, Birgit. So locally for Birgit, that means Germany. She's from Germany and my name is Natalie Himmelrich. If you haven't met me, I'm the founder of the Grieving Parents Support Network. I'm a grief counselor and have been working in private practice for the past 15 years, both with individuals and couples, uh, focusing on relationship and grief. My passion is to help people find healthy ways of grieving. And as such, I have created resources such as books, which you can find um, on the website, on my website in the, in the shop, but also on the grievingparents.net shop and you can, grievingparents.net website, and you can also find the events that we are hosting multiple times a year for free. So such as maybe all heal in May, then we're um, running events, this event, which is starting on Friday, the 1st of um, December, which is the event calendar for the bereaved parents. So have a look at those. So today, as I said, we're going to talk about pregnancy after loss. Uh, many families uh, would like to get pregnant again after the loss, and that is a big topic. And so it has been called for by some of our viewers, and we wanted to talk a little bit on a couple of points about that topic. Yeah. So what I often experience is that especially the moms have a really deep longing for a child. And often they think it is a longing for a new child, but to be honest, it is usually the longing for the child that just passed away and they can have in their arms. And it has two different uh, reasons for that. One is, is um, just a physical reason because um, there are certain hormones um, the body is producing um, during the birth to connect with the child. And when the child is not there anymore, then it's like you're missing something on the physical uh, part of this. And the other one is, I mean, you don't have anything to, or anyone to take care of. So you are longing for a child and it is the longing for the deceased child and not for a new one. So we have to be aware of what the longing is about. Mm. And so in that as well, it's um, to allow um, the understanding that even though we're longing for um, another child, we have to allow time for grieving. And that means being mindful that while we're pregnant or while someone wants to become pregnant again, um, the grief is just is not just going to go away. It's not something that can be remedied by another pregnancy or by another child. And and even though for some parents that might be the idea, um, they they will experience even already during pregnancy that the grief is often actually not lessened but actually increased as part of the pregnancy and the and the process that you're going through as part of being pregnant. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you want to talk a little bit about your pregnancy after loss? I thought we talked about that before, and I think it's a really good example to help people understand where we're coming from. Yeah, I myself, um, I, I have my firstborn um, was my son was born 21 years ago. And after that, shortly after that, I had a miscarriage. I, I didn't really um, grieve about it that much. It was nobody really talked about it and also myself i didn't talk about it i had enough to do with my son but when i then was four years later pregnant again with my daughter um, then all these feelings came up like fear and anxiety and 
grief and I first was confused why why this is happening because I was happy about this new pregnancy <clears throat> but then I had to learn that that it was the grief about the miscarriage I had before and that I really had to have an eye on it and work on it and and I think this is what what parents and especially moms have to be aware of that um, all these feelings increase during a new pregnancy after a loss. Yeah. And so, it, it, it's good if you have somebody who supports you in that, maybe like a doula or, or even a grief counselor um, that can help you translate sometimes the feelings you have. What did you do um, in your situation when you were pregnant and you had these feelings coming up? I went to a psych psychologist. I was was not there very often, but a couple times, and it really helped me to to understand what was going on and, yeah, to finally grieve about this miscarriage. Yeah. So in my case, um, I when we were talking about this topic, I sort of said uh, I don't consider myself an expert on pregnancy after loss, um, and I was thinking about it though. And um, after our loss, I was pregnant again ten months later but I had an early early loss, an early miscarriage. Um, but already then I could tell the specifically the, the anxiety that I experienced as part of being pregnant and being no longer naive about the, the reality of loss is possible at any stage. And yeah. then this ended in an early loss for us and a, and a miscarriage. And that was my first experience of a miscarriage. And then I was pregnant again, probably also 10 months later. Yeah. And then I had um, an end of first trimester loss again in a miscarriage. And what I can remember is it was just like a feeling of um, defeat. And, and I can really relate to clients telling me about their feelings of mm -hmm. um, there must be something wrong with me that I can't um, – can't carry it while I, when I'm pregnant, or for some it might be I can't even get pregnant again. I know I was pregnant before, so a lot of, a lot of feelings of defeat and of like feeling like a failure. Mm -hmm. um, so you know that that was that, that is my experience of pregnancy after loss. But I never got to carry again so long that I got the you know the full blown anxiety or the guilt that I hear often described yeah. what are other, other physical things to consider before someone gets pregnant yeah you should consider how the last pregnancy was like if you had a c-section then you should just wait um usually m most of the doctors say like you have to wait like an a year before you get pregnant again so everything can heal inside your body um so you don't get a new problem when you are pregnant again or even if you um, have, if you are waiting uh, for results from an autopsy or genetic testing, sometimes it can be very important to wait until you get these results before you get pregnant again. Mm. And I think also uh, most important is to to make it specific to whatever the situation is that you, the viewer, has been going through, and you know to find someone trust that you trust someone professional to talk to, be that your GP or your OBGYN, just someone that you can discuss the concerns that you have about getting pregnant or about the grief. It might also be a, a therapist or someone that you trust that they know what they're talking about. And at the same time, taking into account your personal um, feelings about it. And I remember in the book, Surviving My First Year um, of, child, of the Child Loss, which we've just um, released 1st of October, yeah. a couple of people actually wrote about their pregnancy after loss experience. And um, one lady specifically wrote about um, the situation of her doctor saying, make sure to allow enough time to grieve and to grieve fully. And so her um, her thoughts were, well, I will never stop grieving. So does that mean yeah. I should really get pregnant again? So, you know, even though someone... So you want to take people's professional opinion into consideration. At the same time, you need to sense inside and feel um, what is right for me. So in my case, I got pregnant 10 months after um, 
our first two girls were born. And that was circ circumstantial. So it, I would have otherwise waited for longer. I had to stop breastfeeding to, for that because it was um, in, in vitro fertilization. But for me, that was a bit short, but it was circumstantial that we had to get try it then. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it's, it's nice to say you have to do this first or you should wait for a year, but in the end it has to fit into your life. Yeah, and you should to your intuition, yes. We all have this gut feeling and uh, we know uh, inside of our heart what is the right thing to do. So we have to consider all of the things together, put them in one pot, I would say, and then see what works best for you. But you yeah. should consider them. Yeah. And I think what, one of the important things is as well that a new pregnancy will heighten your grief. So, you know, the emotions that you have anyway while grieving – um, yeah. will be heightened through another pregnancy. So to be mindful that this is normal. This is, in fact, um, combined loss and new pregnancy, that this is heightened. So, for example, anxiety or guilt. Lots of um, my clients speak about the guilt of um, looking, for, looking forward to something new another baby, but what do I do with the baby that I, that I have lost? Or like, like, well, I'm as if I'm replacing the baby and these, this is quite normal. So the guilt, the anxiety over, and uh, what I um, described before that you're no longer naive, you know, the fact that you can have, ha you can have a loss at any stage of the pregnancy and either in a toddler stage. So all these feelings play into, in addition to the pregnancy hormones. Yes, absolutely. So that's why I really recommend that you get some support, like a doula or even like a therapist sometimes, just to talk about these feelings and get an idea uh, what helps you uh, in that special situation. Because nine months can be pretty long. Mm. Yeah. Um, and that's what I see also with the parents I support, that it is easier easier in a way <laughs> when yeah. you have some support you can talk to sometimes yeah and christine watching is writing i got pregnant four months after my loss and my anxiety and fear was debilitating i don't suffer from anxiety normally i also had physical issues because of getting pregnant so quickly after full-term loss which yeah. only added to my anxiety it was the support and empathy of my high risk and doctors that helped the most so yeah that's a good that's a good point. Yeah, we, also we have to consider if we have a if we have a give birth to a baby that um, survives, we would not usually not get pregnant again two or three months after that mm. because our body has to re, um, has to um, um, recover. Recover, yes. So we also have to consider that when we lost the baby, that it is a hard thing for the the body if we get pregnant again after two or three months so yeah just on the physical um stage yeah and one thing we also wanted to touch on is the expectations on that we have on ourselves and that the expectation that we meet in others yeah yeah i think um you will hear pretty often from others now you will be fine again everything will be fine again now you can be happy again. You don't have to be sad anymore. Things like that. That's what other people will say. And maybe you even think that yourself about the new situation. But, you know, the one thing has nothing to do with the other. So you still missing your baby that died. And you will be sad about it. You will grieve about it. But you can also be happy or looking forward to the new baby you will have. So, but it's two different things. Mm. Yeah, it's those, those so, seemingly opposite states um, happening at the same time, yeah. grieving and looking forward to. So we'd love to continue the conversation with you. So please write your questions or your experiences of pregnancy after loss and continue the conversation so that you can learn from each other. So we invite commenting even when this video is completed and we'd love to hear how you're going. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments. If you have any suggestions for future conversations, um, please let us know. We'd love to take up your suggestions. And thank you for listening in today. Yeah, thank you so much.